Howdy everyone, hope you're having a great day, it's Has here and I'm back once again with another advanced synthesis guide for Dragon Quest Monsters The Dark Prince, and this time I'll be introducing you all to one of the best support and damaging monsters at the same time that you can have in the game, the large sized Serpent of the Scales. I'll go through the basic characteristics, what makes the monster worth it along with the usual synthesis chart to help you synthesize it yourself, and if you're interested in more synthesis guides in Dragon Quest, check out the rest of the channel as it's chock full of them. So the Serpent of the Scales is one of the most powerful monsters you can have in your team in Dragon Quest Monsters, though do not mistake this is an ultra special honor as the competitive meta for multiplayer is advancing so rapidly and newer and newer crazier combinations are found on a daily basis that there are actually quite numerous top tier monsters in the game that you can combine together for really good team combinations which is overall a wonderful thing, as it means there's a good variety in the game and we can talk about a bunch of amazing monsters that are worth creating. First of all, what makes the Serpent of the Scales really good is that similarly like Crystalinda, they share similar traits for spellcasting, but instead of crack magic, the Serpent is proficient with Zap, as in lightning magic, and they have both Zapmeister for reduced MP costs and the ultra crafty Zapper, which remember is a quite misleading trait as it only said it greatly increases electrical attacks and conveniently hides the secret that this means this trait reduces enemy resistances by 50 if you use the appropriate matching spell, in this case any lightning magic. Someone asked me the other day if I'm sure about this and yes, Basically, this allows you to bypass even elemental immunities on monsters. For example, you can one-shot metal slimes with Crystalinda or the Serpent with their magic, which is why these monsters are so powerful to have in your team and why status effects are gaining more popularity instead of building defenses against elements. But what makes the Serpent of the Scales truly so good is a trait they gain only if they are large-sized, as yes, monsters do have unique large-sized traits so always experiment or make sure to check for them. And for the Serpent, it is both the ultra crafty Zapper I mentioned just now and the Last Gasp trait. Last Gasp allows the Serpent of the Scales to revive a single ally after they fall in battle automatically as a bonus action, but this special trait can be activated only once per battle and it is out of your control, it will revive whoever dies first in your team. I've already introduced Last Gasp in my previous guide for the Botkin Archer, another incredibly good debuffer unit you can have, and a monster that combos wonderfully with the Serpent, but basically this trade gives you a free revive for your team that can be pretty handy, either for teams that just rely on full on damage to give yourself another turn, or in cases like the Botkin Archer it can revive a tank or a monster that activates its traits upon death and gain its benefits multiple times. So overall, a really powerful monster, both for dealing a lot of damage with lightning spells and bypassing resistances, but it is also quite a great support thanks to its automatic once per battle revive. With that said, now that we know why the Serpent is such a good monster, let's take a look at how to synthesize it with another handy synthesis chart. Fortunately, the Serpent of the Scales is quite an easy synthesis to complete, and the hardest part for it is honestly making it a large monster, but that's not really that big of a deal and if you need help with large monsters, I also have a separate guide just for that. You know the usual drill, if you'd like to download this image for yourself, it will be available on my Twitter for download, so check it out over there. But before we get into the synthesis, a quick forewarning like the image says as well, try to progress your story first until you unlock the middle echelons of your circles as it will save you quite a lot of time and I really don't recommend synthesizing this monster down until then. So for this reason, I haven't included the synthesis recipe for Ursa Major. So there are three monsters that needs to be synthesized here, or if you're lucky, then only one actually. The greatest hassle will be synthesizing down your slime cloud, which unfortunately doesn't have any easy methods. You either create a B-rank monster early using any of my guides and then merge them using a recipe of a slime type and dragon type monster, or you progress the story even further towards the end of the game where you can scout it in the higher echelons of the Circle of Caprice. It's up to you really how early you'd like to get your Serpent. I personally synthesize it using a Black Dragon, which I created from using my Bunsen Burner from the Grandparent Synthesis Guide, which is also a B-rank monster. Then, this is the part where luck can give you a big advantage. If you're lucky, you can actually recruit the Green Dragon right at the beginning of the game after defeating it in the lower echelon of the Circle of Temper. 
as it is a zone boss over there. The chances for this are extremely low honestly and I don't recommend it unless you're going to be speed leveling there for the early parts of the game. But again there is no good reason to do that and it only saves us a little bit of time anyway. To synthesize it down normally, you can scout an Ursa Major in the middle parts of the Circle of Conquest during summer, very easy to acquire, and you also need a small fry to fuse it with, who is a monster I think you cannot scout anywhere, but fortunately it is a really easy synthesis of just merging a normal slime with any dragon from the beginning, so really, really simple, and as you can see, you're ready to synthesize your own green dragon, without having to wait for all the RNG fighting it. Once you have both your slime cloud and your green dragon ready, you're ready to synthesize them together, and congratulations, you're an owner of a serpent of the skills. Now if you get your green dragon through combat, you will likely create a large serpent at this point thanks to the size of the zone boss as they are large monsters, but if not, your last task is to grow the size stat of your monster using multiple synthesis with bigger monsters and then finally fuse it together with a large monster, but again the details for this process is in my large monster synthesis guide. Just remember ultra crafty zapper and last gasp is only available if your serpent is large sized monster. So that was the quick guide for the Serpent of the Scales, the first large monster synthesis I've created on the channel. I generally think it's really better to have four small monsters in your team, but large monsters still have an important role in the game, not just to have them in your team, but they are also excellent for the purposes of breeding stronger monsters, since large monsters have increased stats, and so it is easier to use them for increased monster stats and synthesizing down stronger and stronger offsprings of them. But anyhow, you asked for it and the guide is here. Hope it was helpful and was exactly what you were looking for. Thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel, everyone. Let me know down below what kind of guides you'd like to see in the future so I know exactly what content to make for you next. But until that next video, take care, everyone, and I'll see you all the next time.